Hi guys, today I'm going to take you through my experience of filming a TV style news broadcast. From my choice of camera settings and rigs, lighting setup and audio for all of the locations along with all of my production techniques. I'm Lars Wickett and you're watching Director Cuts. This particular project wasn't actually shot for a TV broadcast. It was filmed to be played at the start of a theatre production called A Nightmare on Bristol Street, a fantastic independent dark comedy by a very good friend of mine, Ed Brewster. It was shot and edited from the perspective of the viewer, first switching the TV on to a shopping channel before flicking through the channels to a very strange news broadcast indeed. But before I delve further into the making of the video, let's take a look at the whole sequence. Please let me warn you in advance that there is strong language and rude gestures from the start. So don't forget Festuna, our haunted teddy bears come in a variety of options such as bloody, scarred, burnt, bloody and scarred, bloody and burnt, and our deluxe option, bloody, scarred, burnt and soiled. Yes, Jeremiah, and if you just let me take a look at this. You can see the gorgeous detailing on this premium piece of paranormal paraphernalia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for your help, Festuna. Each teddy bear comes with a certificate of authenticity signed by Father Jack Brennan and has been wafted around the bully rectory at least twice. <laughs> and three people were seriously maimed. Eyewitnesses described it as a fun day out for all the family. And now on to more interesting news. It's legal in France and a well-established tradition in China. And now the practice of marrying the deceased may be coming to Britain. If one... Tipton? Tipperton. West Midlands woman has her way. We now cross live to Randy Wanksblatt in the West Midlands, who has the story. Randy. I believe you interviewed the person involved. Yes, that's right, Dick. Local Teepton, Titan woman, Crystal Region, has appealed to the government for the right to marry a departed spirit lover, Elizabeth Nether. I spoke to Crystal earlier today. Oi, Darren, get back in the house, you tie's ready. Stop swearing at the camera, Margaret. What the fuck? In this sad West Midlands town lives Crystal Region. Crystal is a committed lesbian and has been a Tippiton resident for over 40 years. So how did you first meet your bride-to-be, Elizabeth? Well, it was one night in October and I had my usual faggots and pies and bottle of blue nun before bed. And I was lying there and all of a sudden I felt something cold touch me twice. Well, that's enough details for the first date. Anyway, it was lovely. And then I realised she wore real, she was a ghost and I felt a bit iggledy-piggledy for a bit. But then we got to talking and we had a lovely night. And by the end, I forgot she was a ghost. But how did you two communicate? How do you know she was a ghost? Well, she told me how she died. And how did Elizabeth tell you how she died? Well, she told me, and I don't know how true this is right, that she was in quicksave and she slipped on a frozen pea and fell head fussed into the freezers. And because they, they don't restock the freezers that often, she was stuck there for three days and died in the freezer. Fucking shit place. No wonder it went bust, eh? it? And uh, how did you know you were in love with this spectre? Don't call her that, her name's Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm sorry, how do you know you are in love with Elizabeth? Well, my neighbour right, she has this medium right. And she used the medium to get in touch with her dog Bruna in the beyond. So I used the medium to get in touch with Elizabeth in the beyond. And you feel the energies of people in, out there. And when Elizabeth came into me, I felt her energy coursing through me. And it went from here up to here. And it was like up and down and up 
up and down and just wave after wave of energy and I've never felt anything like it would not be at without me rampant rabbit anyway <laughs> <clears throat> and who proposed to whom well I had to day I it's not like Elizabeth can go to Elizabeth Duke and get a ring can I and how did you propose to Elizabeth well, I got back in touch with me, me next door neighbour's medium, right, and got in touch with Elizabeth that way. Because she ain't got a phone, Elizabeth. It's not like I can ring her. So I got in touch with the medium and she put me in touch with Elizabeth and I said, will you marry me? And she said, oh, I will. And the ring is lovely. It's gold plated, cubic zirconia, yes, beautiful ring. Looks like a real diamond, and I slipped it on her finger, and I knew it was her finger because I felt it. Uh, yes, what do your family think of Elizabeth? Well, they ain't bothered as long as I'm happy, and my mum and dad will get to see her anyway when they pass over soon. Hopefully, not long now. I've got me eye on the big bungalow, it's ever so nice. And how did you find out that marrying the deceased was illegal? Well, I went to the vicar down the road and asked him if he could marry me and my fiancé and he said, well, of course he yeah, she's a ghost. So he, he could marry someone if he could see the, the two people standing there. And he also said it was illegal with Bellend. I believe that no matter who you love, whether it's a cat, a dog, a car or a supermodel, you should be able to marry whoever you like. Uh Yes, and what are you doing to achieve your dreams of marrying your partner? Well, I'm going to write to the government, to that Theresa Wedge. I've written a letter. I hope she can read it. What do you think? Um, <laughs> so are you going to change your name when you get married? Yeah, we're going to double bar on our names. So that will be Crystal Region Nether? No. Oh, what do you want? I'm doing the telly. I want some money. What for? I'll get you a fiver last week. I need some for me fags and tinnies. Oh, no. Oh, go, go on. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Have that. Fuck off out of my sight. Uh, oh, twat. I'm sorry about that, Rambo. It's Randy. No. Sorry, love. I'm taken there. Uh, how old is your son? What? He ain't my son, he's my husband. Your husband? Hey, Darren! <laughs> what? The telly mum thought he was my son. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> Fucking dickhead. <laughs> oh, it's all right, I'm divorcing him soon. You what? Nothing. <sighs> Thank you, Miss Regan, for your time. It's all right, cock. When do I get me 300 quid there? And back to the studio. Our first shoot day was focused on the news anchor in the studio. We actually shot it in this studio almost the same way as I'm shooting this vlog. And we used the monitor screens that you can see behind me as almost broadcast TV screens that I just pulled up news reports and weather reports on YouTube, set all the screens up with something individual to play through so in the background it kind of gave a newsroom feel all the lighting was very much the same as it is now so i had used two newer led lights one up in front of me and one as you could see with a blue tint in it to the side reflecting on the wall just to give that blue haze in the background and there's also a lamp on in the corner just to give it another little bit of a contrast that side but apart from that there's nothing really different from my usual vlogging setup apart from the image of the news anchor himself one of the main differences is that i usually shoot all of my vlogs and everything in 23.976 so that i can get a little bit more motion blur and then when it comes to doing all that cinematic b-roll that i love to do it's it's in the perfect frame rate for all of that but because we were going for a tv feel broadcast feel 
it needed to be in 30 frames per second which actually made all the images a lot sharper and easier to play with so i'm actually shooting this particular vlog in 30 frames per second so it can match up nicely to the original sequence can you tell the difference between this and any of my other ones let me know in the comments below if you can when it came to the colour grade for this particular sequence, I wanted to make sure that uh, it was still pretty sharp and crisp and um, it was probably a little bit more heavily colour graded than it would have been if it was for TV, but um, it wasn't as heavy as I'd usually make it for my own vlogs and it just needed to really kind of still stand out and pop as it was going to end up on a big projection screen for a theatrical performance. So it still made sense to me for it to be just a a little bit more of a heavier colour grade than it possibly would be if it was a normal news TV broadcast. Once we shot the news anchor scene we got it onto Premiere Pro and started to have a play with some of the effects. All of the little logos that come across and the uh, news anchor title name and the little world globe and all of those little interchanging bits and pieces within the video are actually straight from the Adobe stock. All I did was change some of the colours to match up with the vibe of the room and give it a bit more of a uniform feel like it would do if it was an actual news broadcast. After finishing the studio news anchor scene our next port of call was on location to shoot the broadcaster exchange scene outside of the house, the scenes within the house interviewing the woman and also to shoot the shopping scene. With the location exchange outside the house, it was pretty straightforward. I didn't need to take any lights for that as we were shooting outside. It was just to make sure that I'd got the levels in the camera correct so that it would capture the news reporter and be able to give me enough dynamic range to get the house in and anything that was going on behind him as well. So that was pretty straightforward. All I did for that was have the Canon 80D and the Sigma 18 to 35 and the f-stop was set to 4.0 and the ISO was up to 200. I had the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on an extension cable so that it sat just below the feet of said reporter so it caught the audio pretty well and because of the f-stop at round four as I mentioned it gave us enough depth to capture the actors behind the news reporter disturbing his initial report. We then took it inside to shoot the scenes involving the interview itself. With this I used two cameras to do so. I had the Canon 80D with the Sigma 18 to 35 on a tripod on the woman being interviewed. Then on a shoulder rig I had my old Canon 700D with a Canon EFS 10 to 22 millimeter wide angle lens to capture that room a little bit more wide shot and be able to get both the woman being interviewed and the reporter in shot and to jump between the two also to capture the other character that came in through the door a couple of times throughout the sequence. Lighting for this consisted of two newer LED light panels and a Photocell LES 600. The two newer lights to soft light each subject and the LES 600 to really brighten up the room as a whole so that I could keep the ISO nice and low but still get clear shots out of both cameras. Once again all of the audio was done with my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on a tiny little tripod out the way just near the feet of the actors. Seeing as I didn't have an audio boom operator to jump between the characters as they delivered their lines, I was a little bit concerned that the Rode wouldn't do so well as it's a shotgun mic, but I was very pleasantly surprised. And also the fact that because it was quite an echoey room, it did really, really well. I was expecting to have a little bit more kind of audio slapback to deal with, but it actually worked out really well. When it came to the television shopping scene we obviously used the same location but we ramped up the lighting a little bit more to give it more of a open lit studio rather than a naturally lit room like the previous interview. 
I shot this entire thing on the Canon 80D with the Sigma 18-35 on a locked off shot and then did the close-ups on the product afterwards to be able to drop it in the tiny little TV screen in the corner. All of the motion graphics on top of this scene were done in the exact same way as the studio news broadcast just with a little slight difference of design so it looked like it was on a different TV channel. Once again the audio for this scene was pretty much the same with the Video Mic Pro Plus but this time it was on a stand overhung between the two actors to catch their voices as clearly as possible. Once we'd finished capturing all the scenes on location it was time to head back to the studio for post-production. Once I'd loaded all of the footage into Adobe Premiere Pro I'd edited it all up into its sequence, ready for colour grading. The colour grade was a fairly basic colour grade, I didn't go too crazy with it all, I just used slight curve adjustments, a bit of contrast, a little pushed the blacks a little bit more, but kept it fairly basic because I wanted to keep that broadcast feel, although it was still probably a heavier grade than broadcast would normally be. After all the sequences were colour graded and in position, it was time to have a little bit of a play around. Of course, most TVs nowadays don't have those old fashioned noises, but I really wanted to portray the fact that someone had switched it off and on and were changing channels. So I found the sound effects to do that and also a kind of a static glitch and uh, on and off sound that you would have got in old-fashioned TVs just to really make it poignant to the audience of the fact that they were watching a TV. Once all those effects and everything were on there and the video was in full sequence the one little bit that we needed to do was we wanted to make it look like it was flipping the channels at one point so just found a nice old piece of a stock cartoon and slotted that just in between so it looked like he was skipping through the channels before we got to the news report. Once that was all lined up and synced and uh, I think that was in a, uh, a smaller resolution so I had to kind of uh, extend that cartoon section out um, but it also it made it a lot more grainy of course but it made it look a lot more old-fashioned which was great so I quite like that that worked pretty well. Once all the final little touches with the cartoon sequence, the uh, TV channel switching noises and the powering off and on of the TV sequence was in on the start and the end, it was just some tiny little tweaks to match up the colour grade across the whole thing and then it was ready for export. Overall the entire project went really really well. Everybody involved was superb and it was so much fun to film. The only real technical difficulty that I had in the end was with the Canon EFS 10-22mm wide angle lens. That's the lens that's currently on this ATD shooting now and it's perfect in this situation but because it doesn't have a fixed f-stop all the way through it's a 3.5 to 4.5 when you are zooming in and out it keeps changing the going from darker to brighter so I had then when I was zooming in and out quite dramatically in post I had to try and use the exposure to level that off between shots so there was a lot more editing in post because of that. Realistically it would have been better maybe if I'd used the Sigma but the only thing is is I simply couldn't get a wide enough shot with it so I had to go with the lenses that I had and use the 10 to 22 millimeter for this situation. But apart from the hassle of having a fair amount more post-production to try and remedy that it did really really well and it's matched up really really well as well. I didn't really have to change the grades too much even though this was on the 700D so it actually did even better because it was an inferior camera with a inferior lens in comparison to the Canon 80D with the Sigma 18-35mm art lens on it. So overall it did brilliantly. 
So apart from that issue with the lens adding a few hours more onto post-production fixes, technically everything else went pretty well and you can only do the best you can do on a job with the equipment that you have with you anyway. So I'm very pleased with the results and I look forward to doing another video like this. Well, that's all from me and my experience on the TV style broadcast news filming. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit like and go subscribe to my channel. And if you wish to have further notifications on my upcoming videos, please hit that little bell. Thanks for watching, guys.